Welcome back to Mechanical Pros uh, here with Quentin. And we're being talking about vacuum pump maintenance and rebuilds. Quentin, tell me about rebuilding a vacuum pump, when you need to do sure. it, uh, why you would need to do it. Yeah. Good so, practices. so after a while, eventually, even the best of the best vacuum pumps will need to be rebuilt or replaced. So, and, you know, the most economical option that is available is to just do a simple rebuild of the vacuum pump. So, you know, you say that the pump no longer pulls down. One of the main things that you need to make sure of is that you always keep clean oil in the pump because that moisture is going to be pulled into the oil. If that oil is full of moisture, it loses the ability to pull out any more moisture. OK, so good hygiene for your vacuum pump is to keep the oil changed. OK, so let's say that you have clean oil in the pump and it still won't pull a vacuum. Well, it's time to do some investigation. OK, so there's a few things that can happen to a vacuum pump. Um, the most common issue um, is probably going to be the coupling failure. So there's a coupling in between this motor and then the actual pumping section. And it's just uh, basically a rubber coupling, just like you would see on a hydronic pump or something like that. And generally that fails due to improper shutdown. You know, let's say you're in the field and you're ready to shut down your vacuum pump. You've achieved the proper vacuum. You're going to do a decay test or something like that. Let's say that you just flip the switch on the pump. That's not the proper way to do a shutdown. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is actually close the, the valve on the side. You've got a hand valve on the side. So you want to close that valve and then you want to crack the gas ballast open. OK, you're going to let it run like that for a few seconds and what's that then you'll do? flip the switch. So it, it causes less torque on the uh, coupling whenever you go to shut it down. And it's going to be the same way for a startup procedure. OK, so usually you will leave your gas ballast open, have the uh, the hand valve closed, turn the vacuum pump on, slowly crack open the hand valve and you're going to listen for a change in tone in the pump. OK, so once that pump changes tone, then it's time to close the gas ballast. OK, the, the gas ballast is essentially there to preserve the oil a little bit longer. So it kind of gets that first whiff, if you will, uh, out of the system before uh, contaminating the oil. Gotcha. Uh, how do you know when it's time to change your oil? What, 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 what's gonna give you that, that indication? That so a lot of times you'll kind of hit a stall point, so to speak. Um, most people don't change their oil enough. And then some people change their oil too much. Generally, it's kind of one of those things that you just, it's more of a feeling thing over time. You learn how your pump operates and you know when it's hit a stall point. Okay. so. Here at MRG, we exclusively use uh, the JB um, series of pumps. Okay. Um, and so we're, each of us are pretty familiar with, with when they're performing properly and when they're not. It's a 10 CFM vacuum pump. This one's a 10 CFM. Um, most of our guys do use the 10 CFM. A few of the guys use the, the smaller 7 CFM, mm -hmm. but both of them are great pumps, really robust pumps. As long as you keep clean oil in them, um, a failure is not likely. So this, particular vacuum pump was actually used to pull down a really wet system, um, a self-contained unit that had a ruptured yeah. water side heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. And so now the pump sounds terrible. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, and do a rebuild on this one. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and remove the feet off the bottom of the pump here and here. All right. So you've got two screws there. The next thing that I like to do is go ahead and remove the coupling or at least loosen up the screws to the coupling. And the reason we need to do that next is so this motor can actually slide away from the rest of the housing. So we're actually going to be removing the motor um, following removing this coupling here. And I believe this is eighth inch. Let's double check first. And the green piece that you see in there is the coupling. We'll pull that out here in just a moment. So next we're going to go ahead and remove this motor. Now, when you remove the motor, you don't want to pull these screws completely out because it, it is a complete motor. It's got a rotor and a stator and end caps on both ends. So we just want to take the screws out just far enough so that they're out of the casing. We just want to unthread them from the casing. That's all we want to do. And so this can all be done with basic hand tools like you see here. I mean, this is, you know, we're using a quarter inch ratchet, some small sockets, a few Allen keys. This is something that can definitely be done in the field, you know, on a, on a job site, even if you had to. Let's start to see that pump start to separate from the motor there. Get our cable out of the way. You notice that cord's nicked up. We'll have to replace that cord before we put this one back into service. So where do you get this, uh, this rebuild kit? So we actually stock that here at MRG because um, we are a JB rep. And so we usually have a couple of those for the 10 CFM and a couple of those for the 7 CFM because uh, we've got a lot of these pumps out in the field. So here's the motor. We're going to carefully put that screw back in on that one. All right. So this is the coupling we talked about before. 
you want to inspect that for cracks make sure that it's not worn down basically the same thing that you would look for on a on a pump coupling for a, a hydronic pump okay and so now we've separated the two halves here's the other side of the um, the gear for the coupling so we need to pull this guy off so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and remove this other gear piece that connects our coupling let's see we might have to get something to pry up on that it should be out all the way maybe not i'll go ahead and pull that set screw all the way out all right so we're putting a little crawl on there yeah putting a little crawl on there um sometimes you might have difficulty getting this um, little gear piece off because you, know, you got to figure all this stuff is probably going to be rusted so we'll let that sit for just a second and then we'll try to pop it off of there all right so all next right. we're going to take this thing we're going to flip it over like so okay so now we're going to take out these six bolts i'm just going to set this stand aside for right now and let's make sure we get the right size hex key so this one is three sixteenths we're going to have a little bit of oil dumping out the sides there now that we've broke that loose. Mm -hmm. And so we actually drained this before we started. And so this just kind of shows you how much of that dirty oil stays in the pump. So all of those screws have been extracted. You notice that the bottom section of this has come loose. Mm -hmm. This just kind of comes off of there like this. So you see how nasty that is. So that's pretty disgusting you know that's pretty milky and black now you can get um, a replacement sight glass if you want a new sight glass this mm -hmm. uh, the standard rebuild kit does not come with that but it's not really the end of the world um, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to remove these four bolts here okay so this is what they're going to refer to as the cartridge okay and this is this is basically um, the heart and soul of the vacuum pump um, you notice that there's some rust and pitting up here on the top. Remember I said that uh, this one was, had been used to pull down a really wet Ooh. system. So this thing is, it's been put through the ringer. And this pump actually still pulled down, you know, it still pulled the system down, but it's starting to sound really terrible and we don't want anybody to get stuck with it one day, not be able to pull a vacuum. So these are 7 sixteenths bolts. And this piece is going to separate from the bottom. Okay. And so this is actually um, your gas ballast O-ring. Look, it's this one right here. Okay. Then this is the other O-ring. And so both of these get replaced. This whole cartridge gets replaced. So all of this can be discarded. Okay. So I'm going to set this in our bucket here. Right there. And so now you can see the shaft seal, okay? The shaft seal is also something that we're gonna replace. So on a lot of um, older vacuum pumps, um, oil might seep through the shaft seal and then be dripping in the floor. Mm -hmm. So if that's a symptom that your vacuum pump has, um, where it just leaks oil and you can't seem to figure out where, try checking that shaft seal and see if that's where it's coming from, okay? And we've also got the gasket for the um, oil reservoir, okay? All these gaskets come in the kit? All this comes in the kit, yep. So all we're gonna have to do for this shaft seal is pop it out, okay? And then pop the new one in. So the best way to do that is to take a screwdriver and pry it out. So since we're not reusing this gasket or this uh, seal, I should say, we don't have to be extremely gentle with it, but what we do wanna do is make sure that we don't damage any of the metal around it, okay? So we just have to be gentle in that aspect. And it may take some, some finesse it comes right out okay so notice that the seal has two sides it has more of a cup side up top and then a flat side on the bottom the flat side is going to go down okay so normally at this point in time what i would do is take this outside and spray it down with a brake cleaner but what we're probably going to do here is wipe it down with a cloth oh yeah well uh, a vacuum pump that operates in tip-top shape is definitely going to um, save you a lot of time versus one that, that loses its capacity, you know? Um, and I mean, really and truly, you know, vacuum pumps, let's be honest, they live a pretty rough life. You right. know, we kind of beat on them pretty hard. 
Um, but really and truly, I mean, it doesn't take much to take care of the vacuum pump. As long as you're doing proper startups and proper shutdowns of the vacuum pump and not slamming it off and on, uh, you're keeping good clean oil in it. You're not hooking it up to a system that's literally, you know, squirting water out. Um, it's gonna last you a good long time. There's a lot of vacuum pumps that kind of get misdiagnosed as defective. A lot of times we get them in, you know, ready for rebuild and we'll test them first. So we'll put them on a recovery uh, cylinder. We'll hook the vacuum pump to a recovery cylinder and put a micron gauge on the recovery cylinder and then see if we can pull down that cylinder. And then if you can pull down the recovery cylinder, you can pull down a system, you know? Yeah. So that being said, a lot of times we just put them back into the field and let somebody else give it a try and then usually we don't hear anything back. Mm. One of the things you want to make note of is make sure that this surface is especially clean because this is going to have a gasket up against it or an O-ring, I should say. And so you want to make sure that that's clean and then the groove that actually holds the O-ring is also nice and clean, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to make sure that whenever you compress the two halves together, that, that whenever that O-ring seats, that it's going to it's going to compress properly and you get a good seal so you don't yeah. have a, a new rebuild with a leaking uh, leaking seal. So the next step that we want to do is we want to go to our um, our bag that comes in the kit that has all of our O-rings and gaskets and seals and we're going to find the shaft seal. Okay, The shaft seal looks like this whenever it's clean. Remember the flat side is going to go down. Okay, So the instructions tell us that we need to apply just a little bit of grease to this so that it slides in nice and easily. And so what kind of grease you putting on there? So I use this silicone grease. Um, you know, I put that stuff on everything, put it on sandwiches and you know, it's a nice condiment as well as grease. <laughs> I'll trust you on that. Yeah? Yeah. We're gonna push this in with our fingers to start and we may be able to get it to slide in far enough that we're all good. So whenever we're in, the instructions call for so this feel? to be an eighth of an inch down okay. from the from the face of the surface there. Gotcha. Can you feel it seat or do you just gotta Yeah, it kinda bottoms out. Take it all the way so it doesn't go down anymore. Yeah. You got inch. We'll flip it over on this side. You see it it butts up to the bottom of the face there. Yeah. Okay. So that's in there good. We we're able to push that in with our hands, which is good. If it won't go in easily, um, you can use like an 11 16th socket and just push it in ever so gingerly. Yeah. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and install our other O-rings. Small O-ring first. And probably what we're going to do is probably just apply just a little bit of grease just to make sure that those stay in place. Now we've got the big O-ring, okay? So this is gonna go on there like that. Something else that you could use for something like this might be like some Loctite 515, some of the old grape jelly. Just something to hold it in place is all I'm really looking for. I'm not really looking to glue it down per se, but just to, something to give it just a little bit of tack. There's not a whole lot that's gonna stick to it, adhere to it, I should say. So we just kind of be gentle with it and get it to play nice with us and it'll stay in there eventually. I'd have to work it around a few times. And as you can see, sometimes this can be the hardest part of the whole deal. This takes patience. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the um, cartridge on. Okay, and so this is the cartridge. And we've got some, uh, you remember these bolts that we extracted from the old one? Yeah. We're not reusing those bolts. Okay, this comes with new bolts. And these nuts are actually gonna be removed, but we're gonna reuse the bolts that are here. Okay, so, nuts are going away, they're just there to hold the bolt in? Yep, they're just there to hold the cartridge together in one solid piece, okay? And so we've got the shaft end that's going to slide through the shaft seal. So the first thing that we need to do is break these nuts loose. All right, so you'll kind of feel that these pieces kind of move around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So whenever you disassemble this, you're going to want to make sure that you get it right the first time, okay? So you want to take the nuts off the end of the bolt, and then the reed valves are going to face towards the top, okay? 
And so you notice too that you've got these holes. Mm -hmm. These holes are going to align. So if you physically look at it, you'll say, okay, there's only one way that this can go. Gotcha. So you got to be very particular whenever you, whenever you. Uh, so there's put this only thing one together. way to put this bug on. That's it, man. There's just one way. You want to hold it together while you do this. If you wanted to be extra precautious, you could probably take a couple of wood clamps and clamp it on either side. One solid assembly. Remember the reed valves go up towards the top. This can only go in one way. We simply slide it in like so, okay? And so we're just gonna finger tighten our bolts, get those started. And also this pump is made in the USA. And so you notice that all the bolts have been standard size. I mean, that's right. So if you've got a standard set of tools, you will be able to service this pump. And since these bolts are a little bit new, they're a little bit snug. So we're just gonna ever so slightly tighten them down. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of slack in it because we're gonna wanna make sure that the shaft is centered in the shaft seal. Okay, so we'll flip this over. So once you flip it over, you're gonna to wanna to look at the uh, shaft as it comes through the shaft seal and you wanna make sure that it's pretty much equal on all sides, okay? So this um, cartridge is actually gonna to have to be pretty snug um, because you're gonna to wanna to put this in the spot where it's gonna live, okay? So it looks pretty equal on all sides. If you're a machinist, maybe you could get some feeler gauges in there and feel around it and see how um, tight it actually is, okay? You also wanna make sure that you can turn this by hand. Mm -hmm. Now this is a really short shaft and so you know, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but you wanna make sure that it free spins, okay? okay? And so I can turn it back and forth, so this is good. I've already got it pretty snug on the bottom. So at this point, I'll go ahead and flip it over and snug these bolts down the rest of the way. We're gonna do a cross pattern or X pattern to make sure that we torque them down fairly equally. Okay, we'll flip it over one more time and make sure we didn't get too much movement on our Shaft seal, that looks good. So we can now flip this over one more time and put the base on, or at least get it halfway on there. And then we're gonna stand it back up. Okay, we wanna make sure that our gasket stays in place. And we can reinstall our bolts at this time. I'll put one through the front just to kinda hold it in place. Get one of them started. And while we're doing this, we're making sure that we haven't moved our gasket out of the way. We don't want it to come loose and get all wadded up and damage the gasket. So now we have all of this reassembled. So all that we have remaining now is the um, coupling and the motor. Okay, so on this gear piece for the coupling, it's got a flat side. So we're, we want to drop the flat side in. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this little set screw that we extracted initially. You don't have to pull this all the way out. Kind of did that by accident. So the flat side is gonna go against the other flat side, as you probably guessed. And hopefully this will go back on a little bit easier than it came off. And there we are, so we're on there now. So now we can take the motor Keep in mind to keep these screws from falling out. And the motor is gonna go back on the same way we took it off. Can you get a replacement motor too? Sure. And this that's is something, that's this, something JB would, would provide. Absolutely. So this is this is pretty much a fully rebuildable, fully serviceable pump. Okay, and so you might have to roll the coupling just a bit to get the motor to seat. Okay, so this uh, bottom piece here, we didn't really mess with it too much, but we wanna make sure that we've got a little bit of space off the bottom of the sump, but we also wanna make sure that we have a little bit of space from the motor itself. And so that way we know that it's not rubbing, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just give it a little bit of clearance there, not much. So what's the most common user error? with a vacuum pump? The most common user error is probably um, 
not hooking the vacuum pump up um, correctly, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I see a lot of people hook up the vacuum pump and use, um, you know, a gauge manifold to hook, connect to the system. Um, and what you do whenever you use a gauge manifold in series with the vacuum pump on the system is you're creating a ton of restrictions. So just for fun, next time you have your gauge manifold in front of you, take a few of the pieces apart. Basically take off all the parts that you can take apart on the, on the uh, manifold set and just look inside at the orifices. You'll notice that they're about the size of a pinhead. And so, with that being said, that's a major restriction. So the best thing to do whenever you're hooking up to a system is remove all the restrictions that you can, whether it be using uh, core removal tools or using uh, full flow service valves, removing core depressors. And another important thing is to make sure that you're using vacuum rated hoses. Not all refrigerant hoses are created equal. Some of them are vacuum rated, some of them are not. So if they're not vacuum rated, then you shouldn't be using them for, you guessed it, a vacuum. And now all that really remains is putting the base back on, filling it up with the black gold oil that JB offers and putting it back into service. All right, so this vacuum has now been rebuilt and it is ready to return to service. All right, so that's how it's done. That's how it's done. It's time consuming, but it is well worth your time. Um, just make sure to to go slowly and be patient with it. And it's not difficult, anybody can do it, it just yeah. takes time. Yeah, well thanks for that, Quentin. Um, hey, thanks for joining us. If you wanna hear something specific from us, please let us know. We'll see you next time, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and thanks for joining us on Mechanical Pros.